Hello, I'm Stuart Bryant, G3YSX, and I'm the 75th President of the Radio Society of Great Britain, and also, at the time of recording, the Chair of the RSGB Board. I'm speaking to you from the National Museum of Computing, which is home to the world's largest collection of historic working computers. It is an independent museum located at Bletchley Park. In addition to many conventional computer systems, one or two of which I helped to design, you will find a working demonstration of the BOM mechanical and Colossus electronic computers used to decode the Enigma and Tunny codes respectively. There is much to bind the UK amateur radio population to the equipment here at this museum. Firstly, as displayed at the RSGB National Radio Centre, UK radio amateurs contributed to the interception of the radio traffic that was fed into the bomb machines for decryption. Secondly, UK radio amateurs raided their junk box and contributed to the components used to build the Colossus replica. When I am at Bletchley Park, my two favourite stops are the RSGB National Radio Centre and then just along the road to this museum and I recommend these to anyone who, like myself, are interested in the history and development of technology. Computers are of fundamental importance to us as radio amateurs, and as I review this year, I will touch on the importance of computers to amateur radio. At the start of 2022, we emerged from the worst of the COVID pandemic and all eagerly anticipated a return to normal. What we had not anticipated was the reluctance of many of the radio amateur population to return to mixing with their colleagues. We had not anticipated the full consequences of the lingering effect of COVID on the global supply chain. What was unimaginable to us at the start of the year was the economic consequences of Russia bringing war to Europe by invading Ukraine, or the effect of the UK, of UK government instability on the UK economy. These combine to cause significant economic challenges to the UK and of course the RSGB is not unaffected. However, the RSGB has strong financial reserves and a board, staff and volunteer team that is ready to use this as an opportunity to move the RSGB forward and adapt to the new normal. Operating is the core of amateur radio and we use equipment that ranges from the incredibly simple often homebrew QRP radios, radios of historical significance, through to modern radios of conventional or SDR design. Every radio that I have owned that was built post-1981 has included a computer, including some surprisingly early examples of radios with an internal SDR. Computers are fundamental to many aspects of operating, from logging through to QSO recording in databases such as LOTW and Clublog. Computers are now how we hear about DX on the bands through the cluster system, and how we receive advanced information about DX positions. No longer do we need to rely on printed DX news sheets passed from member to member at club meetings. In terms of DX chasing, love it or hate it, Computer mode, FD8, is the most popular method accounting for 59% of QSOs reported to Clublog in 2022, rising to 71% at the beginning of 2023. Many operators automatically upload their QSOs to databases such as LOTW for DXCC credit. And just as using a paper QSL card allows a personal thank you to your QSO partner, JT Alert allows the operator to exchange post FT8 QSO pleasantries. Similarly, VHF operators often use ON4KST's chat system to express a post QSO thank you. I have to wonder how the long term future of energy intensive, partially reliable paper QSO confirmation will be. Independent of my own personal musings on this matter, RADCOM is starting to receive correspondence from members questioning the long-term viability of QSL cards. In 2022, the RSGB ran 214 contests and adjudicated over 25,000 logs, including 2,290 logs from the IOTA contest. A key to this was the bespoke software written by members of the contest support committee. This scale of contesting operating and accurate adjudication of logs would simply be inconceivable in the pre-computer world. 
there were a number of on-air celebration events this year, such as the event celebrating the centenary of the two-way crossing of the Atlantic by amateur radio signals, and of course the events celebrating the Platinum Jubilee of the late Queen Elizabeth II. These were made possible by the use of computers to manage the events and allow a richer participation by radio amateurs the length and breadth of the country. To communicate using the amateur radio bands, we need to have access to the bands in the first place. And then we coordinate the use of these bands amongst the different amateur radio communities. The RSGB committee that is responsible for this is the RSGB Spectrum Forum, chaired by Murray Nyman, G6JYB. Amateur radio spectrum is coming under increasing pressure due to the resurgence of interest in HF for both commercial and government use and VHF and above by interest from the Earth and Space Science community, the Thing community, and of course the mobile phone industry as they move from 5G to 6G and beyond. Of particular note is that Ofcom has publicly stated that they want to see more users sharing spectrum, something that the amateur radio community is respected for doing well. However, Worryingly, we are seeing requirements expressed by the Earth and Space Sensing community that they need new, clean spectrum to which they have exclusive access. Both the need for shared access to more frequencies by new users and the need for new, exclusive spectrum represent a threat to amateur radio's use of the radio spectrum. Also of note is the space-based radar proposed for 45 MHz that risks raising the noise floor on the weak signal part of the neighbouring 6 metre band and the threat to 23 centimetres. 23 centimetres is under threat because the Galileo GNSS operators claim that there is an incompatibility between the receivers that they are proposing to use and amateur radio. All of this and more will be on the agenda at the World Radio Conference in Dubai at the end of 2023. Members of the Spectrum Forum working with the IARU have been actively engaged in the many meetings preparing for this conference and the RSGB will have a representative at the meeting to lobby for our interests. Further details of this can be found in the 2022 Spectrum Forum report published in the April 2023 edition of RADCOM. The RSGB is a strong advocate for amateur radio access to the spectrum that we need, and I hope you will continue to support the Society in this aspect of its work. The RSGB Intruder Watch collects reports from UK licensed amateurs about HF intruders. An intruder is a non-amateur transmission in an amateur band that is not entitled to be there, such as a military data link, over-the-horizon radar or broadcasting station. During 2022, Intruder Watch made 22 reports to the Ofcom radio station at Baldock about intruders heard on nine different frequencies, seven in the 7 MHz band, one and one each on 18 and 145 MHz. In four of the HF cases, the intrusion lasted long enough for a formal complaint to be made by Ofcom to the administration concerned. Over the horizon radars, especially those in Russia, China and the UK sovereign base area in Cyprus, Akaturi, continue to be a nuisance. Intruder Watch has no signed up group of watchers. Any UK radio amateur can report suspected intruders via an email to the RSGB Intruder Watch. The RSGB Electromagnetic Compatibility EMC Committee has a role in protecting our spectrum and our ability to use it. One area of particular success in addressing issues concerning EMF compliance was recently introduced to all radio transmitting licenses. The need for a safety assessment was placed not just on us radio amateurs, but on every UK user of a radio transmitter. EMCC has worked with Ofcom and its discussions with the regulator have resulted in some important changes to the requirements. Low power compliance is accepted without further analysis, provided that the average EIRP is less than 10 watts and the peak EIRP is less than 100 watts. ICNA 2020 limits will be accepted without the need to demonstrate limb current compliance until reference levels are established for limb currents. 
Compliance at frequencies below 10 MHz does not require a minimum separation of the reactive near field boundary, providing a reflection coefficient of 1 is used in the calculation. The work leading up to these improvements was jointly carried out between RSGB and Ofcom and are included in our online calculator. We also continue to work jointly with ARRL and IRTS on this important and technically complex topic. The other aspect of the EMCC work concerns interference and to support RSGB members we have an EMC help desk which in 2022 provided help in 100 cases. They continue to provide help in cases where GFAST and VDSL causes interference to amateur radio operation. In the case of GFAST the issues are better understood and the provider has taken steps to improve the situation but full resolution of the problem has not so far been possible. I remain of the view that the true solution will be the migration to fibre to the premise technology and where this is not economically viable, the use of radio-based last mile solutions such as 5-6G or low earth orbit satellite based internet delivery. I will call out one other interesting EMCC work area and that is in their participation in a project to measure, characterise and monitor the low frequency and high frequency noise floor. A total of 52 online HF stations are monitoring noise mainly in Germany with others in Austria, Switzerland, France, Belgium and New Zealand. Trial measurements using the agreed type of receiver in North London showed the need to optimise the dynamic range and avoid receiver overload caused by local broadcast transmission. In the theme of this talk, I would note that this work on EMCC would not be possible without the extensive application of computer technology in support of amateur radio. We thank the EMCC for its considerable work supporting the needs of members of the RSGB. The Emerging Technology Coordination Committee, or ETCC, supports UK amateurs in the development of repeaters, gateways, data communication networks and propagation beacons, and it promotes and assists in the introduction and licensing of new technologies. They act as a front end to the Ofcom Notice of Variation system, smoothing the way for the successful licensing of systems. The team of nine volunteers processes about 10 new NOV applications or renewals every week to support operation over the radio communications fixed infrastructure used by the UK amateur radio community as a whole. Unfortunately, the demand for spectrum in two metres exceeds the availability in many parts of the UK, but frequencies in 70 centimetres and 6 metres can still be found in most areas. Demand for new channels is largely driven by the three main competing digital voice modes, DMR, DSTAR and Fusion. Fortunately, although single mode repeaters still remain in demand, multi-protocol repeaters and gateways are increasingly being licensed and this reduces the demand on our spectrum. The ETCC continues to work with the VHF committee over standards and spectrum for wider bandwidth high-speed data and with the British Amateur Television Club to encourage narrower bandwidth digital video formats. This approach is important if our access to bandwidth in the higher bands is reduced in future. In 2022, we have had applications for other system types such as POCSAG, Tetra and LoRa data systems. Sadly, repeater abuse is still a problem in some areas. ETCC maintains close cooperation with our Operating Advisory Service, OAS, and staff at HQ to promote action via Ofcom. However, the high threshold of proof and the threshold of disruption to activities required by the UK courts, combined with the limited resources funded by the government, make it difficult for Ofcom to react as speedily and decisively as we would like. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the ETCC for their considerable work in supporting the UK amateur radio community. Having spoken so far about the operating aspects of amateur radio, I now wish to say a little about RSGB membership. Whilst the number of RSGB members has drifted down a little from its peak at the height of the pandemic, it is still higher than at any time since 2011 at over 21,000 members. 
We are delighted that over 1,400 new people joined the Society in 2022 and over 400 rejoined. Examinations are an important service offered by the RSGB. Without examinations, there would be no new radio amateurs. The three levels of amateur radio examination are now overwhelmingly online with just a very small fraction conducted in person. The recently introduced direct to full exam is exclusively online. Club-based examinations, which were suspended during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, resumed in October 2021 and have been available throughout 2022. 200 candidates took their exam in club settings in 2022, the majority on paper. More than 10 times that number of candidates took the exam online at home under remote invigilation, which was introduced during the pandemic and has continued due to its clear popularity with candidates. This is enabled by computers which run the exam software and by a telepresence package uh, which allows the invigilator to supervise the candidate and thus ensure the integrity of the exam system. The exam is marked by a computer which communicates the results to the candidate and to Ofcom electronically. And Ofcom uses a computer-driven licensing system to manage amateur radio licenses. This system provides a number of important benefits. Firstly, exams can be scheduled at a time that is more convenient to the candidate. And secondly, the exam is a private matter between the candidate and the exam process, with no need to declare a failure to amateur radio friends. Due to the hard work and enthusiasm of the team of 27 RSGB remote invigilators, and also club exam secretaries and invigilators, in 2022, about 1,000 examination sessions were held for 2,548 candidates and over 2,100 exam passes. These statistics indicate a return to more typical pre-pandemic numbers as people return to their normal work-life balance. Many of these amateur radio students would have been trained through an online course and we are grateful to those who gave their time to this important activity. Thus, the innovative use of computer technology has been fundamental to the operation of the amateur radio examination system and fundamental to keeping the cost down for both the amateur radio community and for Ofcom. Our popular webinar series, Tonight at Eight, which began during lockdown, continues to inspire people about different aspects of amateur radio. Topics covered in 2022 were as varied as the history of Jodrell Bank through to HF on holiday, log for om and 100 years of BBC technology and innovation. The availability of our presentations on our YouTube channel means that even if people aren't able to watch on the night, they can catch up afterwards. And thousands do that every week. We thank all the Tonight at Eight speakers, its host David Palmer, G7URP, and Tammy Palmer, M0TC, as well as the production team behind the scenes, which includes Graham Ball, G8NWC, and HQ staff. Our YouTube channel continues to grow both in content and subscribers, gaining 1,200 new subscribers. We are delighted that in 2022, we started reaching new audiences with our videos. Our analytics show that between 2021 and 2022, there was a 130% increase in female viewers and a 250% increase in 13 to 44 year olds viewing our videos. As promised, October 2022 saw the introduction of a hybrid RSGB convention in which we blended both local in-person events with the broadcast of some events and lectures to a remote audience. Those of us there in person very much enjoyed getting together with friends that many of us had not seen for a very long time. In addition to the sample of talks that were broadcast live, others were recorded and made available, initially exclusively online to RSGB members, and at a later date, gradually released to the amateur radio community at large. The live streams attracted 6,700 views of this material, and the individual presentations have so far had over 9,000 views. It takes a lot of work to organise an event as complex as our convention. I would like to thank the speakers, the HQ staff and the volunteers who provided significant technical production and operations skills that made this groundbreaking event possible. 
I would also like to thank RSUB General Manager Steve Thomas, M1ACB, for acting as Convention Chair this year. A few months back I placed an advertisement in RADCOM for volunteers to help organise our various lecture and talk programmes. I would encourage anyone with the time and necessary skills to join the team that creates these widely respected amateur radio events. Much of what I have spoken about before has been concerned with our interaction with members of the RSGB and people who are already radio amateurs. We should now consider our outreach activities to attract those that do not yet have an interest in amateur radio to try it for themselves. We welcomed nearly 73,000 visitors to our National Radio Centre at Bletchley Park in 2022. This was despite it being closed during January due to COVID, meaning that it was only open for 326 days. We thank the three or four volunteers that attended the NRC every day to explain and demonstrate and enthuse about amateur radio to members of the public. Together, the 55 strong team of volunteers donated nearly 7,000 hours of their spare time to help at the NRC. To continue with my theme, the station at the NRC is highly automated with many displays to demonstrate what is going on on the bands and includes an integrated link to a remote SDR to allow reception on the lower bands when the local noise level is high. Of special note is the Build a Radio event for youngsters that was sponsored by the RCF and hosted by the RSGB at the NRC, as well as an event to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, a World War II equipment display put on during the Bletchley Park 1940s weekend, and two Yota events in December. Finally, we were pleased that NRC volunteer Steve 2E0YBJ managed to make a direct two metre contact with NA1SS from the GB3 RS station. Please look out for the QSL card next time you visit the NRC. Another method that we have of reaching the public is through special event stations such as those put on by clubs especially special event stations arranged to commemorate very special events such as the late Queen's Jubilee. I thank everyone that put these stations on the air. Of course we engage with radio amateurs and the public through our social media channels. In 2022 our tweets had 1.5 million impressions and the number of people that looked at our Facebook page increased by over 45 percent compared to the previous year whilst the number who saw our posts, videos and photographs on Facebook increased by over 32%. However, it is when we manage to get through to the mainstream media that our profile and that of amateur radio comes to the fore and results in a significant reach into public conscious. The RSGB has organised many major media activities with The Times, BBC Countryfile and others documented recently in the February 2023 edition of RADCOM. These require the RSGB to put significant effort into organising them. I will speak of one recent example. A few weeks ago, Morse code came to the public attention through an activity in the United States. This was followed up by the Times science correspondent, Rhys Blakely, who contacted the RSGB. Heather Parsons, our communications manager, identified people to talk to him, created briefing materials for him, researched necessary facts and figures, helped to put him in touch with RSGB members that he had interviewed. This resulted in a positive report regarding UK amateur radio activity, including its attraction to young people. The Times article had a potential online reach of over 42 million and just over 1 million readers of the paper in its physical format. There was some follow-on interest in BBC local radio. Getting a positive message about amateur radio in the mainstream media is important because it scales to a level that is unachievable by any means ordinarily available to us. I thank everyone, both RSGB HQ staff and RSGB volunteers involved in delivering this positive message about amateur radio to the public and urge all our members to look out for similar opportunities and to help HQ engage with them. In 2022, RADCOM saw a significant change of personnel with the sudden passing of RSGB technical editor Giles Reed, G1MFG, earlier in the year, and then the postponed retirement of RSGB managing editor Elaine Richards, G4LFM. 
As a result, we welcomed Ed O'Neill, M0TZX, as the new RADCOM Managing Editor, and Matt Smith, M0VWS, as our new Technical Editor. The editing staff are supported by a group of volunteer amateur radio and technical experts that are collectively known as the RSGB Technical Forum. The members of the Technical Forum form a panel of reviewers for prospective articles, a source of technical expertise on complex technical matters, and a team of proofreaders able to assist the professional editors if one is indisposed for any reason. Over the year, Radcom has gone from strength to strength. Together, our authors and contributors have written over 160 separate articles on various subjects related to amateur radio. We have reviewed 38 individual items in detail, published 72 technical articles, and 55 special feature articles. The magazine is popular around the world and is enjoyed by readers in 110 different countries. Many of our members have written letters to us and we printed 135 of them in the last word column during the 2022 year. We also helped the membership find new homes for their equipment by publishing 313 members' advertisements. Radcom Plus continues to provide high-level technical material while Radcom Basics is enjoyed by those seeking to broaden their knowledge of the fundamentals of amateur radio. During 2022, Radcom Basics included nine technical articles, five features and two reviews. Radcom Plus included four technical articles and three features and gained over 800 new subscribers. As you will see, Radcom Plus articles were highly regarded by the judges of the Society's Technical Awards. Computers play a central role in the collection and review of materials submitted to be published in Radcom and of course its layout, printing post and postal distribution. However, I hope that they play a more significant role in the future. A significant part of our subscription income goes in simply producing and buying paper, printing Radcom on it and transporting it to your letterbox. And then of course most members eventually dispose of their old copies in recycling. These activities consume considerable energy, which is why they are so costly, and many of them result in a significant increase in our carbon footprint. We plan to introduce an electronic version of Radcom in the next few months, with many exciting new capabilities. Members who are content to read Radcom electronically and decline the paper version not only drive down RSGB costs, but they drive down the carbon footprint of the RSGB. I hope that most of you will see the advantage of computer, tablet and smartphone delivered Radcom and migrate to that format for the benefit of both the planet and the RSGB. I should note that the services to the amateur radio community provided by the RSGB is delivered by a small, mostly part-time staff of 18 people, supplemented by a volunteer team of over 660. I thank the staff for their efforts and dedication, but I particularly thank the volunteers who donate so much time and expertise to both the society and to the amateur radio community at large. Members should, be, should remember that it would be impossible to hire this number of volunteer hours or to afford to professionally engage people with the level of expertise that we have within our volunteer pool. This address is almost my last duty as president of the RSGB. It has been an honour to serve the society in this role and I thank everyone who has helped me in my duties these past two years, volunteers, staff and members. I am delighted that John McCullough, GI4BWM, has been elected by the society as its 76th president. I have worked closely with John in various RSGB roles over the past 10 years and I know that we are in a safe pair of hands. Please offer John your full support as he navigates the RSGB through the challenging and changing times ahead. <laughs>